In a televised address to Russia's Federal Assembly in 2018, President Vladimir Putin announced an escalation of the ongoing arms race with the U.S. which had withdrawn from the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty in 2002. Having rejected the decades-long arms control agreement, the U.S. had developed and begun building a network of defenses to intercept long-range ballistic missiles, threatening Russia's ability to deter attacks on its homeland. He had warned Americans that Russia would be forced to respond to these deployments, Putin told his audience, but they had refused to listen. So listen now. A Vanguard is a stratospheric hypersonic glider that is launched into a low-Earth orbit by intercontinental ballistic missiles. It is then undocked from the rocket or precisely booster and descends to the upper layers of the atmosphere. On these, it glides on an undulating trajectory toward the target area. Once there, it enters the thick lower layers of Earth's atmosphere and flies toward the target. According to computer animations provided by Russia, the aircraft has a triangular fuselage geometry with an estimated length of 5.4 meters to generate sufficient lift and integrate many critical subsystems. To launch the Avangard, Russia's strategic missile forces use modified UR-100 and intercontinental ballistic missiles. In the future, it should also be possible to equip the RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile, which is currently under development, with a Vanguard glider or multiple gliders. The UR-100 and intercontinental ballistic missiles are two-stage missiles with liquid rocket engines. Since intercontinental ballistic missiles accelerate strongly and reach high speeds, the UR-100N booster provides a very high initial velocity for the glider. Therefore, the rocket can reach a final burn speed of over 24,000 km per hour. At an altitude of about 100 km, Avangard is decoupled from the booster. The glider now initially follows the specified ballistic trajectory and then descends at a shallow angle to the upper atmospheric layers. On these, it glides on an undulating trajectory toward the target area. To reduce the massive thermal stress and strain on the glider body, especially at intercontinental ranges, and to prevent the development of a thick full plasma sheath that blocks the guidance radio signal's aggravating control, Avangard most likely spends some time at low altitude in space, probably between 100 and 150 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and then descends into the upper atmospheric layers at an altitude of 80 to 100 kilometers to maintain much of its incredibly high initial velocity due to very low air density while preventing the development of a full plasma cloud around it for a large part of its trajectory towards the target area. However, a thin plasma layer is certainly generated during this flight phase. This can reach temperatures of 1,500 to 2,500 degrees Celsius. Such high temperatures make a heat shield indispensable. According to Russian sources, this required the development of special composite materials that can withstand these temperatures. Besides using a heat shield to reduce thermal stress, the glider can even follow skip trajectory, meaning while flying through the upper layers of the atmosphere, it can leave the atmosphere and re-enter, and so on, as shown in this image. This is a way to protect the glider from severe thermal stress during much of the flight, and maintaining the incredibly high initial speed for predetermined maneuverings in the final phase. In this way, external guidance also becomes possible. For skip trajectory or generally for flying in higher atmospheric layers, attitude control and steering will probably be performed with control nozzles. At a distance of about 2,000 to 500 kilometers from the target, depending on the predetermined trajectory, Meaning how early should the glider be detected by ground-based radars? The glider begins re-entry into the lower Earth's atmosphere, approximately 40 kilometers above the Earth. The sooner the glider enters the final phase of gliding through the dense atmosphere, the later it will be detected by the long-range ground-based radars. As it flies through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speed, the glider converts a lot of kinetic energy into shock waves and heat in a short time and continues to heat up. During this process, the velocity of the glider reduces to about Mach 10 to 15.
The control in this last phase of flight is probably done with control surfaces. This final glide phase in the dense atmosphere is the most critical phase, during which the glider must withstand enormous temperatures and pressures for a long period of time. During this phase, which might be up to 2,000 kilometers, a full plasma cloud develops, completely embodying and cutting the glider with any kind of external guidance. Therefore, navigation is done with state-of-the-art fiber-optic gyroscopes to hit the target with the desired accuracy. However, if the glider is equipped with a nuclear warhead, accuracy will be more of a secondary concern. Another possibility is that the Avangard spends almost the entire flight time at altitudes between 80 and 100 kilometers and would fly a sharp maneuver towards the target when it reaches the target area. In this case, the glider is under massive thermal stress only for a very short time, which is absolutely tolerable. It should be noted that the higher the glider flies, the sooner the enemy will detect it before it enters the final targeting phase. However, at this tremendous speed and maneuverability, early detection is unlikely to be a threat to the glider flying at Mach 20. It is also claimed that Avangard has a built-in scramjet propulsion system. However, this is rather unlikely since such sophisticated engines are air-breathing and the air density in the upper layers is very low, which hinders the proper functioning of the engine. In the lower layers, the glider reaches a still high speed of about Mach 15, so the airflow velocity is extremely high to have enough time to properly mix with the fuel in the combustion chamber. Moreover, the highest speed currently reached by a scramjet is about Mach 9.6 which was achieved in 2004 by NASA's X-43A at an altitude of 33,500 meters for a short period of time, namely 11 seconds. However, Russian with Zirkin cruise missile demonstrated their ability to build scram jet engine reaching Mach 9 at an altitude of 27 kilometers for several minutes. However, building a scram jet engine that can operate over a long period of time under such extreme conditions is an incredibly difficult technical challenge. Integrating a propulsion system into the Avangard therefore makes handling and controlling of this dizzying weapon system even more difficult in particular since such engines are optimized for a specific altitude. The extremely high initial velocity of the glider makes the use of a scramjet engine unnecessary. Avangard is highly likely a pure glide vehicle without an independent propulsion system. A hypersonic glide vehicle must generate lift, a force perpendicular to its direction of motion, to stay aloft and to turn. As it happens, lift is also proportional to the square of the velocity. Moreover, the aerodynamic processes that produce lift also unavoidably generate drag. The ratio of the lift force, L, to the drag force, D, is called the lift-to-drag ratio, LD, a key marker of a glider's performance. Achievable values of LD for hypersonic vehicles are much lower than for conventional aircraft. For subsonic aircraft, the ratio can be 15 or larger. Yet after decades of research and development, U.S. hypersonic weapons tested in the past decade appear to have LD values less than 3. Such low LD ratios mean low lift and high drag, which limits the speed and range of a hypersonic glider, reducing its maneuverability and increases surface heating. Theoretically, wave rider designs can increase the LD values of hypersonic vehicles to 6 or higher. These use a wedge shape that matches the shockwave pattern of the airflow around the glider at a given speed and altitude, enclosing part of the shock wave under the vehicle to provide additional lift. This is probably the trick the Russians used to create higher lift and lower drag for a given or limited range of speeds and altitudes. Keeping the LD ratio high and constant is the key to reducing drag and heating when gliding at hypersonic speeds through the dense atmosphere. This is probably the technological breakthrough that the Russian scientists and engineers have succeeded in achieving. On December 27, 2019, the 1st Missile Regiment armed with the Avangard Hypersonic Glide Vehicle officially entered combat duty. On September 19, 2020, Herbert Efremov, an advisor for science at the NPO Machinostrania, was awarded Order of St. Andrew for his contributions to the Avangard development. 
avant-garde will absolutely guarantee the continued existence of Russia for decades to come and renders the entire U.S. defense network useless. Thanks for watching and see you next time.